Um, and we're recording. Let's get started. And we were showing you guys this hockey curve. And we were talking about next week, which is going to be just uh, exposure sessions. We're going to have two industry professionals, one technical and one sales consultancy, both in cybersecurity. And they're going to talk to you about their field, their job roles, that kind of thing. OK, so you, you get more exposure. Again, the keyword for this whole boot camp, this, these eight sessions, is exposure. So uh, we hope that these six, ses six sessions, including this one, are going to give you exposure across the several prerequisite, prerequisite domains of cybersecurity, like computer, we said, networking, concepts, programming, that kind of thing. And you come out with a few projects. Today, we're going to have two projects uh, added to the uh, repertoire. And you come with exposure about the you come out with an exposure about the job market or the industry with the the upcoming week. So that's the plan for now. And of course, if you have like any feedback or anything you want to add, um, make sure to to give it to us. Um, all right. So today we're going to do a very interesting thing, which is database. So we're going to talk about databases, and we're going to see how we can make this right now it's very static we talked about php a bit and made it a little bit more dy dynamic but right now it's uh it lacks state there's nothing behind that that we can pull data from or anything it's just user input and that's the only thing that determines what we see here so um let's get started with a let's open this of course we we, we saw how the um how we can launch a database how or from, from within uh, XAMPP. we can stop it we can restart it let's actually restart it here and um, we're going to talk a little bit about we're going to do two things we're going to do sql and we're going to do php but before that i want to show you how we can automate a very interesting task so let's come here into let's clear this okay ls and let's go to slash opt slash lamp slash ht docs which is the directory where all of our files reside okay and let's add some stuff in here so i'm going to add like um let's actually remove everything that we don't need so um or maybe we can keep them so the other things don't break but let's add like some files so i'm gonna say uh touch okay that's how you create a file on linux and I'm going to create something like um, maybe I want to create some random files. So ABC uh, content. Uh, let's let's make them all the PHP. See the PHP. Um, I don't know some uh, anything cat the PHP. Okay. And okay, permission denied. So let's do su do su. And that would put me in a root shell because I need higher privileges to access this directory. And I'm going to repeat the same command. I cannot because we have separate history. So I'm going to copy it, Control shift c Control shift v and we're here. OK, so if we do ls, now we can see all of these. And by the way, we can do ls-1 to have everything presented like in one line like this, or ls-la, for example, to see this in like in a in a more uh, see privileges on each file and see like more information so um, what I want to do is when we go here for example when I go to like control okay it's uh, okay so when I go here localhost first of all do you know uh, why is localhost taking us here like what's like we know we know that 127.0.0.2 Point zero point one, that's the same thing as localhost. But how does like how does the machine know that localhost is the same as one two seven zero zero one? Any any answers? Okay, DNS. But but like, doesn't you, like everyone on the internet they have their own um, localhost. So how does like the DNS why like you get the idea like you have your own local host for every machine so do we have like some Google server that we ask for local host and it gives us one two seven oh one 
actually it is like uh, in this case for localhost it's it's an intermediary step before DNS which is the cat slash itsy let's um, cat slash itsy slash hosts okay and if we look here this file let's control L so this file contains this entry here 127.00.1 localhost okay and that's like a local file that stores the before DNS resolution before anything it just the first entry or the first the front line cache or, or or DNS like name resolution file in your system so it is going to check anything in here first right before it, it, it tries to actually make a DNS request um, so let's try and add something let's let's give it a different name so I'm gonna do Let's do a nano for this time, nano slash hc slash host, just to, to showcase this concept. Um, and here, I wanna I don't want to say localhost. I want to give it some other name. So I'm going to say uh, 127.0.0.0.01. Uh, I'm going to press tab key. And I'm going to say that this is uh, my website, OK? Dot, dot com, OK? Even I can add something like this. And now, when I control O to save this, and then I press Enter, this is saved. I can control X to exit. And now, if I go to mywebsite.com, I should see the same page. Okay. So now this is not going to an actual server. So I think if I do mywebsite.com, uh, okay, now I cannot do this, but uh, let's do, <laughs> wait, how can we do this? We can, we can test this actually here. So if I do ns lookup and I do mywebsite.com, it's going to give me this. Okay. That's the address. And the server that told you this is the local DNS server, which I believe is not a, like it's not an actual running service. It's, a, it's done by the, by the system, by this taking long I don't know this hangs um, I'm not sure what's happening why is this happening I think it's probably a memory something because the whole machine is freezing yeah, it's internal, right? That's right. What's going on? Maybe you can add a little bit more RAM. Okay, terminal is not responding. Wait. I think maybe we can look at, at memory usage. So uh, top, for example. And we look at this. Okay, so actually it is memory. Let's do top dash H, I believe. Uh, it is top. So top is a way to look at, at your running processes in Linux, and it gives you that interactive moving C, uh, like view, and you can press Q to exit. And up here at the top of top, I can see my total memory, and I can see how much memory is free. So there is a... I believe 400 megabytes that are free and yeah that's why probably it just was crashing in a second so let's actually see if I can increase memory quickly here like through the uh, I don't know if I if I have to exit the machine I believe you can add memory so let's add like um, I don't know if you can see this okay you can so let's add like uh, another another gigabyte for example okay i like to keep it even but let's just keep it here multiple of 128 is this a multiple of 128 no oh it, it gives you an, uh, a hint the nearest allowed values okay so five three seven six okay so we can okay so the machine has to reload 
see that's a nice thing about a, a virtual machine now I, I can like fully control everything i i want about the machine while it's running while my programs and operating system everything is running so that's like uh one of the reasons why we use virtual machines the flexibility okay here we go now if i do top again i should yes it's different now i have more memory and i have more uh, free memory so i can work uninterrupted uh we can continue now so i believe now this should yeah here we go so again live troubleshooting let's make this smaller clear and run that again and i don't want to see to see the processes and indeed yeah okay so we have this local dns server running and i think it is special in the sense that it is uh like i'm not sure but i think it's special but anyways if i do ns lookup here and i do uh, my my website dot com it tells me the server that gave 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 it this address okay that told this told it that my website.com is at this place now i can do something different and i can add here the dns server for google for example 8.8.8 .8 .8. it's going to request my website.com from google not from my own dns so if i do this here we go i get a different address and that's the actual uh address you would see if you go to that name on your machine without uh, my like extra etsy host added okay so does that make sense oh yours first too <laughs> so uh with that being said now my website is going to be just my website.com from now on and let's see let's say that for example this login page i'm going to move it to because we're going to do an attack now so let's do this so this login page is going to be situated at let's move index.bhp which is the current page i'm going to call it uh super secure login page.php okay so now if i refresh this okay <laughs> okay it has it has uh like it, it allows directory listing so this site is a, is a misconfigured in a sense like if someone doesn't know about anything about the content of the website and they navigate to root they would see like everything listed in here so how do we disable that i will give you two minutes to search how can we disable directory listing in apache because that's a security it's not a vulnerability per se but it could be something unwanted we don't want everyone to see the contents of our of our web server for example maybe you have some backup files here dot back and they're they're supposed to be not known and now we're exposing our internal web server structure so how can we avoid that how can we tell apache not to do that two minutes and let me know it happened no not because index.bhp is not given because if if i if i uh well in a sense there is no page but for example if we had like dashboard and let's go for example in image for example there's a folder called image and this folder doesn't have an index with bhp so i'm able to look because there is nothing to serve by default it's going to look at the index with bhp look for it so it's going to show me the directory structure instead it's going to act like a file explorer dashboard i think is going to have something but how can we think let's see if we can force this behavior even force directory this thing even with index php so look for the solution i'm doing something else here All right, there's something about that here. Okay, there is no, I think it's not possible. So what I'm searching for is whether it's possible to um, force, like even when there's an index of BHP, BHP, there's index of BHP here. It's uh, .html, I believe. 
HTML. Uh, even when there is an index file, I want to still see the directory. I think it's not it's not possible. Okay. Okay, so he's saying that the Okay, actually I found it. So uh, either there's two solutions to prevent this, which we which is a security vulnerability. Okay, uh, we have this. So if we have image like this and there is no index to BHP file, Apache is not it doesn't know what to serve. It's not going to give you a random image. It has to look for a file that's like index to BHP or index to HTML in every directory. So every every like route here matches a where is the uh, it matches a directory in our in our uh, opt slash lamp. So if we re here, do a list, so there's an image directory here, and that's where the image comes from. So now what we're trying to do is prevent that. So we don't want the anyone from outside to be able to tell what what items are inside this directory. So he's saying, this guy's saying that if you add options that minus indexes, we can remove this. And you create it in a file called .htaccess. So let's do just that. I'm gonna uh, I put in the uh, in here. So I'm gonna do echo and add these commands and add it to .htaccess. Now, with this added, I believe I shouldn't be able to see this if, if everything's correct. Refresh. Here we go. So now we get access forbidden. You don't have permission to access the requested directory. There is either no uh, index document or the directory is, is read protected. In this case, it is uh, both. Or it's, I think, the first one because there is no index. Now, if we go to slash again, we get the same thing because there is no index. If we go to slash dashboard, did anyone actually get this? How can I run uh, Zamb? Adam, uh, Adam, we have a question. So Raf is having trouble. Uh, right. So uh, how, how do I run Zamb after installation? So the I think it, it doesn't like show here. So if I if I open my like, um, applications and I do like Zamb, it doesn't show, right? So what I, what we have to do is do sudo slash optlam slash manager the next to run okay that's our um, zam uh, file or like binary so if we do this we're gonna launch launch the manager that's the one okay and thanks Timothy for the, for showing me this earlier. So every time you want to you want to run it, you can do this, or or you can you can do something. Uh, that's not actually deviate, but like you can create a shortcut to that. Um, actually, it, it won't take time. So uh, okay, so okay, let's see how can we do this. If I have a new tab here, and I see press type cd just cd to go to my home directory. Now I'm I'm in my home, and I want to add a shortcut to that. So I can type uh, link, okay? Let's actually look at the help, because or ln actually, ln. And you type in dash, let's see the, because I forgot this, so s symbolic, which, what's the order? So target, link name, okay. So you do ln, and then you type dash s for a symbolic link, and it's just like a shortcut in Windows. And I'm gonna type the thing I'm going I wanna link to. So that's gonna be opt lamp and there's gonna be manager. Manager, I believe. Yeah, manage manager. Okay. And I'm gonna type the name of the shortcut. So I'm gonna call it Zamp here. Or Zamp.run, for example. So I remember. Now enter ls. Now I have a, a, a shortcut here called Zamp.run in my home directory. All I need to do is just sudo zamb.run and it's asking me, asking me for password 
and uh, let's actually do dot slash here so it knows that it's getting this from this directory enable to initialize installer is temperature is, is e Linux I think it has to do with the fact that it is running from a different directory we, we can we can keep that for later it's a like a specific thing um, or maybe I did something wrong. Anyways, uh, but if, every time you want to launch it, you can do this, slash opt, slash opt, slash lamb, slash opt, slash lamb, slash manager, and that's it. What is happening? Did I, did I miss something? sudo dot slash opt or slash opt lamb manager what is it called yeah manager dash linux so manager dash linux why is it uh I'm actually not sure what's, what's going on. We just ran it now. Slash alt slash lamb manager. How, how we fix the website? We need dot slash before manager. But that's what I kind of. No, you, I don't think you need, you just need, so you need lamb, manager, Linux, run. No, this is, this is insane. I don't know what's going on. No, it, it's, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's a typo here. No, just my bad, it just, uh, I, No, that's just me. It's a stupidity on my part. So yes, that is. The thing is, when you're doing, uh, when you're typing sudo, you don't get autocomplete for things that you don't have access to. So I can't autocomplete from here. Either I have to do a yeah, no, so it, it's working. Either I have to do uh, sudo su to enter a privileged shell, or I have to. Um, like type it manually full name so okay so let's go back here and if we look at the dot ht axis that's the file that we were that, that's the contents that we added ht axis is a way that's used to tell apache like things about um access control so what which directories can be accessed which cannot and some other configurations in this case we added uh, minus indexes to prevent to prevent like images from being exposed or like any directory without an index page to prevent it from being exposed so now i want to i want to say let's say that i don't know what directories like now that we removed that and we, we patched that security vulnerability let's say i want to see now this page it's giving me this and i don't know what's going on there is a secure login form somewhere but we don't know that it exists yet so how how can we tell? So let's write a tool to automate this. Like one like one solution is like go here and like try different malicious or like uh, valuable strings. So I can do admin.php, it's not found, and I can try maybe login.php, it's not found, so, and we can keep going and going and going. So how can we automate that? So again, Python. So let's write a tool that allows us to brute force directories aka enumerate directories and uh, it's gonna report to us directories that are accessible so we can go and look at them because maybe maybe one of them is malicious um so let's go here and we're not gonna do vs code sadly or we could if you have it on your ubuntu that's good otherwise i'm just gonna 
use um, my cousin. So let's open terminal here, or we can use the existing terminal here. Can we rename this tab? No, this is a very bad terminal. Okay, so here I'm gonna clear, I'm gonna CD to my home, and I'm gonna CD into documents, and I'm gonna create, uh, why do we have random FNG here? Okay, maybe one of my experiments. Let's uh, create a file, and that's gonna be called derenum.python. Uh, dot py. So there enum for uh, it's going to be a script that helps us enumerate. It's a security script that helps us see what directories exist in a given web server or, or on a given web page. Is that clear? Like the what we're trying to achieve, the idea that we're trying to achieve. All right. I suppose. So let's do that, and we we're going to build that script. First of all, how can we differentiate, so like systematically as programmers, how can we differentiate between a, a page that exists and one that doesn't? Okay. So let's see. Uh, first, I want to check something. So super secret login page.php. That's what it is called. Login. What did we call it earlier? Um, Super secure login page, okay. Super secure login page, the PHP. Can we remove this PHP? Okay, we can't. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Uh, we'll put that into account. So let's say, for example, I, I, I will show you two requests, the two requests, one that is valid and one that's not valid. Firefox is not gonna help us here. So let's do clear here and let's do curl. And I'm going to do V, or let's do dash I for headers, I believe. Uh, and let's put in my website dot com slash uh, random page. OK, it doesn't exist. OK, so we get something here. Let's try something that does exist, like, oops. So my website dot com slash dashboard. Do we get something here? No, we don't. The dashboard. Okay. So what what do you see? So ignore these two. We have this one. It doesn't exist. It's a request to something that doesn't exist. And we have this that goes to something that exists. What is uh, a unique trait that we can use to identify pages that exist programmatically? Okay. Yes, the return value. What is it called in HTTP terms? So he's he's talking, I think, about this, right? If you said this, if you mean this, then you're you're right. That's the HTTP status code. And two hundred is success. Three hundred is uh, a redirect, and four hundreds are errors or not found. Okay, there's a a list of four hundred level errors. So let's try to write a, a tool that allows us to find things that return 200. So it's going to try random so many uh, pages and directories, and it's going to report to us the ones that return 200. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to say import requests. OK. With requests is, is the uh, library that allows us to speak HTTP in Python. So it's the a popular HTTP library in Python. And it happens to be, it's not default. So it's not something that, that's installed by default. So let's quickly, I think you can, you know how to install this. So we can do pip3, install, and based on your system, it might differ. And I'm going to install requests. And let that install for now. Pip3 not found. So let's sudo apt install python3.pip because I believe pip is not available by default with, with like your Python installation. And then I, I'm gonna say yes. If I disconnect at any time now, it's because uh, my internet is, is crying, complaining. Cannot handle uh, pip install with a video call. So 
let's let's actually get to the code because or, or let's let's look at the documentation so requests well that well, well that's installing requests is the simple HTTP library yet elegant emphasis uh, which allows us to talk to libraries uh, to web pages and if we look let me zoom in a little bit and if we look here the example that they have in the documentation now we said multiple times that we need to be apt at looking at documentation. We're not gonna be going to YouTube, we're not gonna be going to third party resources. We're gonna go directly to the uh, software provider or the one who provided the library to us. And we're gonna look there. And if we find it difficult, we can go to the other ones. But initially we try our best to go and find information from within the document documentation. And this library turns out to be very, very popular. It's used in, in so many things. 300, uh, 337 million downloads this month, which is insane. It's one of the, it's used in web scraping. It's, and, and you might not use it directly, but it's used by many, like other libraries are built on top of it. And that's why it's, it's very popular. Uh, so let's see, the very first two lines here showing us exactly what we need to do. So he's doing requests.get and he's grabbing the, uh, the, uh, the web page and then he's saying r r is the response and he's looking at the status code 200 precisely what we want to do and he's doing some other stuff it seems like he's providing a user and a password but we don't need this so let's do that let's let's actually copy that we understand this code let's actually copy it or, or let me actually type it <laughs> let's type it uh, now i have this installed let's now go to do pip3 install requests it is installing, oh, already satisfied, so I had it by default, did I? Okay, so I guess it, okay, it comes with, uh, I didn't know that, because it's not part of the start. Maybe Ubuntu packages it uh, with, uh, or maybe I got it before. Uh, but anyways, now I have requests. I'm gonna do responses, be like a little bit explicit in our variables, so we understand what's going on. So we have response, and we have, uh, requests which is the name of the library dot get and we want to get something okay so we can let's try this one time first and then we're going to do the the brute force and http and let's make this uh, a or let's try this first so my website.com slash so we're going to automate the things that i just done using curve so we did like two levels of, of, uh, of testing. So we did it in Firefox first to see what's going on. And then we did um, use it in curl to see like more like granular level of like see the actual codes and the headers that are being sent. And now we're automating it ourselves using uh, Python and requests. So, and actually, by the way, if mastering this one library requests can make you do so many powerful things. You can now talk to different ABIs, you can automate like uh, you can get like a, an ABI token from Facebook and like automate sending things on your Facebook or your Instagram. Uh, you can upload things to YouTube. You can quit, like you can talk to all websites using the, just this. Uh, and with like learning about ABIs and authentication, that kind of thing, you can do so many things. So much automation can be done with that, just, just that one library. Uh, so I'm gonna add like not found page here. And that's this, okay. And I'm going to do print response dot status code. Okay. And let's say like received status. Let's zoom in. I'm sorry. Uh, status code off. Here. And I'm going to do this plus because I'm uh, a little bit OCD. So now if I do this, I'm going to run it. You run it your way. I don't know if you're using VS Code or whatever, but I'm going to run it here. So by Python 3 and then a person sign for the name of this file. And here we go. It returns received the status code of 404, which is makes sense because it's uh, not um, this page is not existing. So let's try something like something that will give us a, a redirect, like the dashboard. So if I go to dashboard, without a, a, a forward slash is going to redirect. Just save this and run it. Wait, what? 
Okay, so requests by okay, so requests by default is gonna follow the redirect. Okay, which is good. I think it's good. Um, maybe we want to differentiate between things that come instantly and things that uh, come through a redirect. So let's see how can we tell requests not to follow a redirect. And I'm gonna ask for the documentation because um, I don't know this library. I haven't used it much. So uh, if, if like if I haven't touched this library before, the way to go is look at the documentation, consult it. Uh, so let's see, I'm gonna search here, control F on this web page and redirection. Here we go. So the, they literally have a whole section in their documentation and that's because they're a very mature, uh, popular library. So you can, they have everything in their documentations. Oftentimes, or sometimes you, you'll meet libraries that you need that do not have that kind of uh, library. They don't have everything documented or the documentation is very technical. It, it assumes that you know what you're doing. And okay, this is precisely what we want. And you will not find your information easily. Sometimes you have to go into the source code of the library and like see how things are implemented within to get the information you want. And we, you need to be adequate or like apt to comfortable with any, any of these. So let, let's um, copy this. So we have a, literally, did I lose it? Uh, allow redirects or yeah, that's the one. So that's a parameter, you pass it to the function and automatically it's gonna, uh, not, it's gonna, it's not gonna redirect. So if we do this and paste that in here and I run this, we get received the status code of 301, which is a redirect. Uh, is everyone on the same page? You get what we're doing or what's happening here? Yes, and you can combine it with beautiful soup to do web scraping. So like uh, you can bring the page and then scrape it for certain things on the page, like collect data. So you can go to Wikipedia and like take data from there. Maybe you want you want to look for numbers or you, or you want the first paragraph of each session. You can go to Banner uh, our and like scrape the courses. And it's it's very very valuable tool in your in your arsenal. Um, okay, it, everyone is is good. Like I'm not going too fast. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Now we know how to make requests. Now let's and we know how to grab the status code. So our code in like in sudo code terms is going to be something like this. We're gonna have a list. So list or list is a keyword. So we're gonna have a word list, okay? It's gonna have so many things, like so many names. And ideally we grab this from online, okay? And it's gonna go through all of these. Why, why I have such a, let's just keep them. Uh, and, and it's going to go through all of this content in the word list and append it or like uh, like request it. And then look at the status code and report the pages that had a status code of 200 that are actually there. So you can go as a security professional and attack them or like look for, for vulnerabilities in them. Uh, in them. So um, let's create a loop, okay? So, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna modify the word list in a second. So I'm gonna create a loop and I'm gonna say for word or let's call it entry in word list okay i want to do a request for every one of these uh, for each one of these so i'm gonna come here and let's make this indent this because python is um, indent aware and for every i think that's that's all it takes except i just need to let's make this a format string using an f here and let's add a the entry here. So I'm gonna do entry. Cool. And I'm not gonna allow redirects to differentiate between what's a, what's coming through a redirect and what's not. And here I wanna I, I don't wanna like um, we can actually run this first. So here we go. Received a stats code of 404 for all of them because they don't exist. Makes sense. So now I don't want to reboard these. Uh, let's like before starting, I'm gonna print. We're making a, actually we're making a fully fledged tool now. Let's make this in a uh, 
function. So I'm going to call it enumerate directories. Okay. And it's going to take a, we can do that later. We can, okay. It's going to take a host and it's going to take a word list. Okay. And this function is going to have this within. And right at the beginning, I'm going to say um, loaded word list with, and let's make this actually a format string, like making the tool more appealing, more uh, user friendly, and loaded the word list with length of the word list. Okay. Or like loaded word containing entries, scanning started. And okay, I believe that's it. And all the way at the end, we're gonna create another statement for the user and like scanning complete, found, and let's add something. So I'm gonna have a, uh, so found uh, and like the count of things that were found. So found, found uh, directories, files. Okay. And here I want to do something. So I don't want to just print the status code of every entry. No, instead I want to inspect it. And if it is a 200 or a 300, three, uh, 301, a redirect, I want to look at it. So I'm going to say if response dot status code okay response to status code is in and that's how like the one of the beauties of python and if it is in 200 in the list that contains 200 301 we can actually make this a variable as well so i can say allowed status codes and it's going to be 200 and 301 let's make this a variable up here so um so the script knows what, what to look for, okay? And because maybe maybe at some point I'm interested in uh, things that are returning 303 or things, maybe I'm interested in the errors, the not found 401, or maybe I'm interested in something else. So I wanna look at these. So uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just, for now, I'm gonna look for 200 and 301. And now if this is the case, then I'm gonna do found plus equal one, okay? There should be a variable called found. Let's make add some white space. And here, let's add a comment. So start scanning. And before we start scanning, we're gonna have found equal zero. And if we find anything, we're gonna increment that. And we're gonna print, print that here. Do we have any questions? Can you show the Python code again? Uh, that, that was a while ago. So uh, if response to stats code in 200, in the in the list of 200 and, three, and 301, I'm gonna increment found by one and I'm gonna print tell the user. And I, I don't wanna tell the user, uh, like I don't wanna give them this. I wanna give them what was the request. So um, I'm gonna say something like, I want to tell them the entry that triggered that status code. So I'm going to have like, let's make it like nice. So I'm going to add like a plus sign for positive and I'm going to put the uh, response. Okay. And I'm going to add the, um, like let's add some, the status code, the actual status code. So, and let's add that between or, or because that's going to be so Let's add it here as well. So here, and it's gonna be a response dot status code. Okay, so we're gonna have a plus and then response status code, like 200, 301, and the response at the end. So let's actually, uh, so and at the end, we need to call this function and I'm gonna do the Python convention, which is if name, equal to main this is just a, a common idiom that says if if this file is ran and it's not imported like it's not some other file that imported me 
it's actually ran from the command line, then I'm going to do the following. I'm going to just call uh, our function. So what was it called? It's, uh, so it's called enumerate directories. So I'm going to say enumerate directories. Adam, can you repeat why uh, we're using the word list? We're going to bring in a second. I'm going to give it the word list. Can you repeat and it's actually like move all of these uh, print statements to the main function, okay? Keep them part of the main function. So that, that the enumerate directories function is just about the enumeration. It doesn't do anything else, uh, like as a, as a best practice. And let's actually like add a new line at the end to keep everything nice and neat. And here as well, add like a, an empty line before. And let's bring these down here as well. Yes. And let's keep this here. Okay, so we did some cleaning up and to keep everything nice and tidy. And now let's, oops, okay. So let's go here and let's fix this, okay. And yeah. Okay. Adam, can you hear me? Are we all on the same page? Now I want the user to be able to uh, like make this. What what is the word list used for? It's gonna include all of the things that we want to try. Okay, so maybe like things like admin, a dashboard, login, and it's gonna take all of these and go iterate through them and uh, try to get each one. Okay, and we're not gonna we we're, we're not gonna use these. As a word list, we're going to fetch one from the internet, which has so many entries that we can try and use to find our uh, our pages. Now, let's so let's add something. Uh, let's make this a command line tool so users can use it. So I'm going to use import. First of all, let's go all the way up, and I'm going to import sys. OK, let's add this here. And that's where we, I'm not going to use like uh, what we used before arg bars, I'm just going to use sys to grab the uh, the arguments right away. So I'm going to say sys.argc, okay, that's the, uh, and let, let's like put the usage of the, of the, the tool here. So the tool is going to be used this way, dir enum.py, okay, dot slash, okay, and we're going to include the host, the thing we want to scan, like mywebsite.com. And then we're going to add uh, the word list that we want to use. So that's going to be like some files. So uh, my word list dot list or like dot text, some, some file that contains so many entries. And then we're going to have maybe we want something like extensions because like the word list might not include like .bhp, it's just words, like common directories. We want to add like maybe want to test for .bhp, something like that. So uh, we're going we're gonna to have something here like PHP, okay? Maybe, maybe it's like a comma separate list, like, uh, or maybe that's too much. Let's just keep it one for now. So that's how we want to use the tool. Okay, and, and we'll make this PHP option, optional. So um, let's do this. Let's remove this. And and let's do if sys.argc not equal. So dot arg, oops, dot arg v and like uh, length of that. Okay, so arg v is gonna, is a special variable that stores all of the arguments to our script. Like it's gonna store everything in here, okay? So all of these, so we can look. It's it's a list. So we want to count them, and they should be at least uh, this much, three or four. So if they're not three or four, if they're not three, or we can do a not n three four, okay? Then I'm going to print, I'm, I'm going to exit first of all. So I'm going to do system.exit. I believe that's the uh, function or just exit. And we're going to see now. And I'm going to say uh, 
we like we're gonna complain. So I'm gonna do something like uh, invalid usage use uh, use this way, and I'm gonna add like a new line. And then maybe like a tab character, so like to shift the text. And I'm gonna say something like, um, let's add F, okay. And I'm gonna add something like sys.argv, which is the list of, of these things. And I'm gonna use the, I wanna refer to the name of the script. So that's the first entry. So I'm gonna do zero, okay. And then to refer to this name, and then my website, so uh, target, or let's like add an example, so example.com, and then word list file, and then uh, optional, so uh, extension. And then we can add like a new line. Let's like do, can we do this? And I can do like a new line. I believe this is not going to work. And I can do something like uh, give give them an actual example. So, so if we're going to do an example here, so let's remove this. And I'm going to say target website. And and uh, yeah, and then here we want to do like example.com uh, directories directories list dot text and then maybe like PHP. Hopefully this works. Let's try this. Here we go. Okay, it works. So in, in Python when you're within a string here and you add this backslash with and with nothing after, it's gonna like allow you to type below it. Like uh, it's gonna like it's gonna ignore what's coming after here. And just gonna go to the next one, okay, next line. So uh, now, now we can run it, and it it gives us something that is uh, very friendly, and it says invalid usage. Use it, use this way, and it's gonna give us the syntax, and it's gonna give us the uh, the like an example below. So let's actually like the example doesn't look good because we forgot to add. It says dot argv. Let's actually add another like to make this nice to look at. Let's add a here, add an escape here, and let's do this here. Slash okay this way, and here we need to add another sys dot argv zero. This way. Look at the code. Okay. And we can run this. And here we go. We have a better way to look at this. OK. Are we all good? We can go now and fetch a word list. So I'm going to go to like, um, there is a popular one called uh, sick lists. OK. And we can go to GitHub. Oh, I think we can use this one, common. That's very popular. And um, in security, word lists are very, very important because we can use them to brute force so many things. Uh, for usernames, for example, if you want to brute force usernames, if we have a big word list of common usernames, we can use that to brute force usernames. Uh, passwords, the most common. If we have a, a hash and we want to crack it, for example, if we are able to find a word list that is so large, it contains millions and millions of passwords, we can try all of them. So, and again, in a website, for example, we want to try, we want to brute force directories or find directories, we can do that with a word list. So uh, this word list, as you can see, it contains really interesting things that we could find in a uh, in a in a website, so let's copy. Let's actually download that. I'm not sure if we will we'll be able to. Okay, we we we'll keep it in down in our downloads, and 
it's downloaded. Now I want to load this file, OK? So instead of having this word list here, like hard-coded as a list, let's fetch it from a file. So I'm going to do something like this. So I'm going to do with open. And I'm going to open the word list. So uh, oops, the uh, word list. Let's let's first like grab the uh, like if 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 this happens if it's not three or four parameters, then it's gonna move to the uh, it's gonna uh, it's gonna exit. If it is three or four parameters, then we're going to move to the next step, which is running the actual script. So uh, I'm gonna do this here. So I'm gonna do the the first argument, which is the website, is gonna be. I'm gonna say like host is going to be equal to sys.argv1, OK? Let's copy that line. And this one is going to be a, the word list file. And that's going to be at 2. And then the next one is going to be the extension. Extension. Uh, and this is going to be set only if, so like if, um, so I'm going to say length or like, um, I think, OK, so we're going to do, do it this way. So it's going to be equal to sys.argv3 if length of sysargv, uh, so, so we don't throw an error, argv is equal to 4. Otherwise, else, it's going to be just empty. OK, does that make sense? So this is a ternary, the ternary operator in Python. It allows you to do like uh, a check like this way. So it takes three parameters, a condition. And what happens when you when you um, when that condition is valid, and what happens or true, and what happens when that condition is false. And because it's optional, we used that. And we we're nothing fancy. We're not gonna do any like error validation or anything or checking. Just we're going to open the file, the wordless file, as a file or like word list or just like F. Okay. And we can say that we want to open it for reading. And I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to say that word list is going to be equal to uh, word list or like F dot read lines. Okay. It's it's very naive, but yeah, that's how we're going to do this. Okay. And allowed status codes, let's keep that up here because it is like a global variable. And let's make it all capital. And I think it's, okay, so this is operating. So let's, okay, let's actually keep it up here because our function is going to be using it. And sorry if I'm moving things around too fast. Uh, and I'm going to say here that allowed status codes. So if the status code is in the allowed status code, print it. Otherwise, move to the next one. Are we, are we clear? If I'm not seeing questions, that means everyone is good. Um, because now I think our script is ready. We can we can actually use it. So let's move down here. And like review what's happening. So here we have just a simple sanity check to tell the user that they're using this script the correct way. And if they're not, we just exit. Otherwise, they're going to move to the next step, which is grabbing the things they entered from this uh, special argv list, which contains the different parameters. So we're taking the host, the first thing, like the website name. And then we're taking uh, uh, the, um, like the location of the word list. And then an extension, which is optional, like PHP or HTML, for example. And then we, we're, doing, um, we're opening that word list file and grabbing everything into a variable called, called word lists. So let's actually pass the extension, because right now our script does not support extensions. So let's pass our function. Let's pass it here. And I'm going to go all the way up here. 
and say that we also take an extension. And I'm going to have a, uh, like, just add the extension here. So um, we can say something like, so, or we can just, okay, so we can just append, append a, because uh, I want to do, do it a nice way. Um, okay. Because um, it's going to look ugly this way. So I'm going to say here that, So I'm going to say that this is going to be extension or uh, like a dot plus extension if extension or no we I think we can do this oops we can do this a better way so why did I think of this so uh, entry and here we're going to do something like extension and and so if an extension exists or we can use and uh, and you you will put the extension you put like a dot plus extension extension and i believe this should work otherwise so if extension is empty it's gonna like take the first one just the empty string if extension exists and this is true then we're gonna add the dot and the extension and that's how we ensure that we add an extension correct so now I'm going to WQ. Do we need to look at the code one more time? OK, the main purpose of this script is in security, oftentimes you'll be looking at a website and it is uh, like you don't know how to attack it or like what are the different pages on this website, OK? Like now I don't, wanna, I don't know if there is a login page or maybe there is an admin form or, or I don't know how to like where do I go? If I want to attack this website or like uh, actually like like know what's existing here, so how do we do that? We try to brute force. We bring a word list which is very large, okay, and we go through every single entry in that word list and we try to uh, request it. And if it exists, then that's a, a, a page that exists, and we tell the user that this page is there already. If it doesn't, it returns a not found error or something else, then we know that this is an invalid page. So like maybe login, it's not an it's not existing. So that's not a valid page. So we're trying to make this convenient, make it faster using a script, automate that process. It's called directory enumeration, and there's so many tools officially that like I mean like uh, professional tools that does this already. Um, because it's a very common task. Is, is, is that clear? Okay. And we're going to see, let's actually, like, instead of super secure login page, because I think the common word list doesn't have this, move this. Instead of super secure, let's call it, like, uh, login.php. Okay. So now I can do something like, where's, uh, so I'm going to do something like dot slash dir enum. Let's actually change mod. Or we can we can run it with Python. So okay, so I can do vim dirt num, okay, and I can go all the way up here and I can do hashtag exclamation mark slash pin slash python three. And that's like the first line is called the Shebang line, and it's just telling the uh, it's telling Linux or Bash what to execute or what program to use to execute this file. So I'm gonna make this file executable dirt num.py using change mod, okay? And I'm gonna do dot slash dir enum without having to type the name Python before that, and it should run. Here we go. So now let's target it at our, let's make first, let's make a, 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 a mock word list. So I'm gonna do word list here, and it's gonna have like dashboard, hello, and index, for example. I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to use my tool, dirt num, and target it at mywebsite.com, and then give it the name of the word list here, and then give it, I don't want to use an extension, so I'll keep that empty. And then press enter. Okay, name found is not defined. Did you mean round? Okay, so 
that's our first time running this, so let's edit it. So found is not defined, what does that mean? Found, okay, because of, uh, okay, so we can make this, let's add found. Let's make our enumerate directories function, return the number of found, uh, the number of things that were found. So let's return found. Let's say return enumerates, then returns number of found directories. Okay. So now I can do this. And oops, let's do the, yeah, that. Here we go. So scanning started and scanning complete, and we found zero directories or files. Is that true? Uh, let's look at, let's get my word list. It contains dashboard. I believe dashboard should have been a valid um, response, right? So, or maybe like, because we added 301 in the, what was it? What, what did, let's look at this, so dashboard. So it is, okay, so if we curl I, I want to like make sure that this is working correctly. Without the slash, 301 moved permanently. What what do we have in the, uh, otherwise I have like a mistake in the code. So 200 is allowed, that's right. So it's probably an issue in this part. So let's actually see if this is working correctly. So, uh, I can do something like route equal, and I'm gonna have the, uh, like this exact same thing here, okay? And just like, I wanna print this to make sure that it's working correctly. So print requesting and route, okay? So now if I close this and run this, so it's requesting dashboard, it's requesting. So I think dashboard should be returned as true. So why is it not returned as true? Um, it's probably something very silly. Allowed status code are 200 and 301. Now we don't allow redirects, so it should, like one more sanity check, it says 301. So, um, this dashboard should be, should return true. Hmm. Are we missing something? Entry. Let's say that, let's actually like copy all of this, like everything that's sent to the, through the request. And like, let's delete this. And let's add that here. So, here, and let's add like a, a marker here to, to determine maybe there's something ex, extra in the, okay, I think I know what's going on. So it seems that there's like something extra going here. Like that line should be right here, but it's going all the way down. So it's probably like my uh, my stupid trick that's happening here. Maybe, could we do this? Nope. So, um, okay, let's, let's say that if, Let's make it like more explicit. So if extension is equal to, is empty, or if, if not extension, but I think it, sh it should it should definitely work. Um, maybe that's not in Python. So if not extension, if, if there's no extension, then what we wanna do is, 
or may maybe it is taking so okay one second one second let's delete this let's see print sys.argv and let's see what we're receiving on the other end okay so we're not receiving an extension so that's right so if we receive if we do add an extension bhp so why is it going down here so the whole extension is going down for some reason did i so i'm, I'm not sure exactly what is strip the entry since it ends with a new line oh so oh, okay you're right so okay okay so the entries when you get when you when you get them from okay that's that's stupid uh, when you get the entries from the file it has a new line at the end i thought it gives you the uh, a so we can do we, when we go here we can do entry dot strip to remove like any white space around that and then we have this this is correct so this part is correct and I don't know if we need this. We don't need this, I believe. And let's, okay, WQ, and I can do this. Here we go. So we're able to request them correctly. And, okay, so maybe, okay, so, so this one is without the BHP. If I add BHP, yeah, we get this, correct. Uh, but still, we need, this should return one, so we need to find something here. Okay, so okay, so let's do this, and and what is exactly going missing in here? So I'm I'm actually not sure why is it not showing as a. Hmm, interesting. But like, is everyone on the same page? Do you see what, what's what's the issue we're facing right now? Or like, what, what are we trying to solve? Like now this dashboard, slash dashboard, should return something, which is 300. Now let's see why it is not returning what we expect it to return. So let's print all responses. So print response. W, Q, and then, okay, so they're all returning 404. That makes sense for the BHP. But without BHP, why is slash dashboard returning? Uh, so maybe, again, I think this it's all because of the extension. Okay, so W, Q. No, it's, it's, it's valid. Why is dashboard returning 404 here? While well, it should return, like like when we do when we do curl mywebsite.com slash dashboard. Hmm. Am I getting? A, okay, let's see. <laughs> Okay, do we have a... Do we have... No, I, I can't... I can't hear anyone. I can't hear anyone. It's not, it's not muted. Do we have... Okay, again, can you try again? Can you speak again? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, yes, yes. Was, was, it, was yes. it happening for a long time? Yeah, for like 30 minutes, but it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> well, I don't uh, really typed in the chat, at least. Yeah, uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, I think the issue now is that you fixed in, you fixed it in the print statement, but you need okay. to fix it in the request line. Like the response is equal to request.get. You need to add the dot strip there as well. Did I not? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is actually stupid. Okay, okay, you're right. Okay, that's uh, okay. Impressive. Okay, 
Yes, here we go. That's why you need a single source of truth for everything you do. So like this, this, this string should be only one place. So directory, and it's going to be here. And thank you very much. <laughs> and then you have this here. So it's going to be directory, or let's say, why directory? Just URL. And here, we're going to say URL, URL. And all the way down here, we're going to say also URL. We're getting that URL. And that's it. Now we should, it should work. And what is happening? Yes. So this, I believe, is getting something. Okay, there's something that we just missed. Um, print response. If response status code is in allowed list, allowed status codes. What is happening? So we need to print it. Is that not happening already? No, this is this is. Did, wait, did I not? I didn't modify it. Okay. So after talking about the source of truth, I didn't modify it. So yeah, that's it. Now here we go. Here we go. We're getting that, and we need to say something like here instead of the response itself. I just want the URL, and now we can. We can remove this WQ. Here we go. Okay. So after this struggle, now we're able to determine whether a, a website is, or a page is valid or not, or it exists or not. So I'm going. I'm going to go back to this page and I'm going to make this. Okay, it's called login, and I, I want to enumerate or find everything that exists on my website. Okay. So I'm going to do dear enum. Is everyone on the same page? uh i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna show you the code in a second but i'm gonna point to the word list that we just downloaded so it's it's in my home directory downloads common.txt i believe downloads common.txt okay if i press enter it contains 4727 entries we're scanning and anything that we find we're gonna dump to this page Oh, and it found something. It found dashboard. It found favicon. It found image. Okay, and these are all actual directories that we can look at in in our page. So they are here. Okay, they are they are here on on our uh, web server, and it's finding things for us. And it's even found that random weird thing because it it, it happens to be something that is uh, that exists uh, like it's popular in 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 uh, web pages as a default configuration. So scanning complete, and we found five directories. Now that's very interesting. Now let's try and find uh, PHP files. Okay, so I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna type PHP. I think now the picture is, is forming. Okay, and I'm gonna I want to look for things that end with PHP. Okay, so I'm gonna press Enter, and we're running our brute force. It found abc.php. I didn't know that abc is something. Oh, it found cat as well. So 4,727 entries in that word list are enough to find so many things. Content, it found that. And now we can go and navigate to each one. Oh, and found login. Found a very interesting page, login. So now we can actually go and click that. Control, click. You can, I don't know if it, okay, it's loading. And here we go. We found four directories. And now we can look at this, OK? So using our script, we were able to uh, enumerate a website that we previously had no information about. In this case, it's our website, but we were able to look at it. And uh, that's something that could be used maliciously, right? 